I work in a library, but by no means am I a librarian. I'm a multimedia production specialist at the University of Nevada, Reno. Our goal is to use traditional literacies and digital technologies to enhance learning, teaching, and understanding. In the library, I work alongside librarians, researchers, and teachers whose goal and job is to accurately archive the past. The value of any archive lies in the reactions it elicits from present and future audiences. It's the ability to revisit a point in history or to learn a new idea for the first time. Recently, we've added virtual reality to our list of specialties, and it's this intersection of VR and a library context that I find particularly important. Now, I know you may be thinking that virtual reality or augmented reality may be used for video games or simulations. In preparation for this talk, I used an application called Ovation VR that allowed me to simulate this very stage and audience inside a virtual reality headset, so that I could spare myself from having to visualize all of you in your underwear. <laughs> But with options like this, it's not—it's hard not to think of a dystopian future, like the book and movie Ready Player One, where people are glued to their alternate realities. Escaping from the real world in front of them. In all honesty, it's difficult to speculate what will happen in an uncertain future. So instead of focusing on what VR can do for our future, what is virtual reality doing for our past? As you can imagine, libraries are constantly organizing and maintaining a variety of special collections, from photos and videos, books and papers. Digitizing these types of items is known and important for their longevity, but how do you digitize a sculpture or a building? What about an artifact? That's where my team comes in. We're currently in the process of 3D scanning and 3D modeling the unique material collections of the university. By tying these digital copies to context and creating metadata to express their invaluable significance. We can take this one step farther by putting it into virtual reality environments, where you can interact with these objects, pick them up, and inspect minute details. From this moment forward, we can utilize virtual reality to archive items of importance and even moments in time. By using 360 video as archivists, we can transport the viewer as if they were actually there. When you put on a virtual reality headset and watch a 360 video, it's not just watching on a phone or on a TV monitor. The video is all around you, and in some ways, you are inside the video by stepping your consciousness into someone else's perspective. I first realized how important this was when I met Evan. Evan is a university student who lives with cerebral palsy. In the short film I directed called *Walking with Reality*, it takes Evan on a variety of 360 video experiences inside a virtual reality headset, from visiting the Black Rock Desert and even skiing on top of a mountain. When we curated these videos for Evan on that day, we were still trying to figure out how to use this new technology. We had no idea how significant it would be. And neither did Evan, although he was in awe with visiting the playa for the first time. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! What do you think? Was beautiful. Oh my God! That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Oh my God! None of us could have imagined what happened when we took Evan virtually skiing. Oh my God! Oh my God. How was it able to ski again? I'm <laughs> speechless. I'm speechless. 15 years old. 
You need to see all your watches. The video that took Evan skiing wasn't just him experiencing the sensation of gliding on snow. Coincidentally, that video was filmed on the same mountain and the same ski run that Evan enjoyed on a sit ski 34 years ago. The moment we helped him into the headset, he wasn't just experiencing a simulation; he was recalling what it was like to be a kid again. Evan's message inspired the world. And it helped us to reimagine how libraries should think of cultural preservations. And by no means are we the only ones. Organizations like SciArc and the Digital Institute of Archaeology have begun to digitally document and preserve cultural sites all around the world that are subject to human and natural caused degradation. Because face it, human created things are vulnerable and ephemeral. Nothing that we make lasts forever, but by using high-fidelity scanning techniques, 3D modeling, and 360 video, we can preserve moments and artifacts into virtual environments so that people can revisit them later. 3D models can go beyond preservation and can be used as blueprints to repair buildings. Now, who in here has ever gone to a museum and wanted to touch the artifacts behind the glass? In a real museum, this would never be possible. But in a virtual museum with virtual items, they don't run the same risks. Theoretically, we can observe art and architecture indefinitely. And. It's not trade secrets to use 360 video or even 3D modeling. You can download 3D modeling apps onto your phone and start 3D modeling everyday objects around you. In the past few years, Reno, Nevada, has seen an explosion of color in the city. Artists from the biggest little city and from around the world have started to paint on our buildings. Enlivening our sense of place for locals and tourists alike. Inspired by other mural recording projects around the world, university libraries set out to document this street art in our own and interactive way. We started by taking thousands of photos, but how can you crane your neck in a photo while looking at a five-story woman painted on a parking garage? We needed VR to put this into context, so the documentation of the Reno Street Art Project came into two parts. The first, an online archive with photos of each mural and meticulous metadata, and the second is a virtual map of Reno that combines 360 videos of these murals and their relative location around the city. While in the headset, you can then choose whichever mural you want to go to. Almost as if you're in a gallery. Now, many of you may be thinking that watching a video of a mural may be like watching paint dry, but it's not. There are birds flying overhead. You can hear cars on the street, and even recognize buildings and neighborhoods. We even included five spotlight artist vignettes that tell how this street art. Has changed our community and their perspective. Although this project was filmed only a short while ago, it has already proven its value to us, as many of the buildings have been painted over and even taken down. This wasn't just about creating a project where you could look back on the street art. This was about preserving the memory of our city, of our reality. If you really think about it, this may be one of the closest versions of time travel we may be able to experience as humans. And when you film in 360 video, it's a lot less intrusive than having a cameraman in your face. It's almost as if the fly on the wall was actually recording. When the Reno Street Art Project was completed, we invited the artists that we worked with to come back into our studio and to see the project that we've created. Although there were hundreds of videos taken throughout Reno, one particular video stood out. 
The video that you see on screen now is a time lapse of two artists painting inside of a Reno club. The first artist is one that we worked with throughout the project, and the other has since passed away. The moment that I had realized we had captured such an intimate moment between friends, I was speechless. This goes beyond preserving the street art or our city. This was about preserving the memory of real people. As I said before, the value of any archive lies in the reaction of people who engage with it, how it moves us, how it inspires us. Think of every single photo or video that you take as adding to your own historical record. I personally try to record every moment with my family into 360 video, so that my niece and nephews can take a step back to their childhood, to their reality. The real power of this technology doesn't lie within big companies or universities; it lies within you. It lies within all of us to keep documenting, recording for generations to come. I work in a library, and although I may not be a librarian, I hope that one day these digital and virtual archives will mean the world to someone. Thank you.